Hello everyone, my name is Steve from DNS Creations and uh, I decided I'm going to take you all along on building a uh, 3D printed HE rocket. However, disclaimer, these will not have a HE warhead as uh, we're not going to be testing at the Ordnance Lab range quite yet again. So uh, they cannot be uh, explosive of course, so they're just going to be rockets, but still the assembly will provide some insight on how these things are all assembled and how they function. So first things first, we're going to take our igniter and we're going to get started by dipping the motor igniter into our Pyrogen blend. So this is going to take a few coats. We basically want to uh, saturate the igniter with our Pyrogen blend and it's going to coat it with a nice thermo compound and that's going to dry up eventually and cause a nice crust. It'll cause a good hot ignition for the rocket motor. So we're going to give that a few dips and then set it aside for now. Dan, would you like to say hi to the uh, DNS Creations fans who hi are guys. probably not online yet? We will have an audience, uh, fully expect an audience of tens of people. Tens, yes. Tens, okay. Like, like one, two, tens. So the next thing is we want to take our modified APCD solid rocket motor and this motor used to come with an ejection charge. Well, for what we're doing here, we don't want an ejection charge because that is proven to uh, ignite erroneously and blow the projectile apart in flight. So what we're going to do is uh, I've already removed the cap for the ejection charge, poured out the black powder, and I'm just going to cover up the hole with have a hot glue. All right, so we have our motor here. We have our tail fin segment here. And it looks like our pyrogen is already starting to crust over. So next we're gonna take our igniter and we're going to insert it all the way up into the motor, fully into the bulkhead of the uh, engine. That means we're gonna insert the motor igniter until it stops. Uh, off camera, what I've done previously is I have taken a, uh, a small, actually a paper clip, and I've scratched up the fuel grain on the motor and that causes the fuel grain to get a, a, a nice rough surface on the inside. It causes uh, a more rapid ignition and uh, case pressure to build up more quickly uh, for launch. Next, we have our quick burning fuse. This fuse here burns at a rate of three tenths of a second per foot. So that this uh, four inch length right here should burn up entirely in one tenth of a second. So after inserting the uh, igniter into the nozzle. I'm going to insert the quick burning fuse and kind of wedge it into the nozzle so that it both uh, obstructs the nozzle slightly, causes the motor to build a rapid case pressure just for a millisecond before the fuse ignites. And then it's also going to be retaining the igniter. Next thing, we're going to take this igniter wire and we're going to wrap it around our fuse. Spiral it around. All right, now that we've got that prepared, I'm going to take a small strip of HVAC tape. This is a uh, aluminum foil HVAC tape. And we're going to secure the fuse and igniter because we don't want anything to happen to them during handling during assembly. So I've got this very thick aluminum foil tape made for uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. I'm going to wrap it around the nozzle. And then I'm going to secure it around our fuse and igniter assembly here. So the nice thing about this HVAC tape is it's uh, since it's aluminum, it combusts very readily in the exhaust of the rocket. So uh, as soon as the rocket is ignited, it'll uh, and, and this is in milliseconds, uh, it'll build case pressure, but then it'll light the uh, quick burning fuse and then it'll burn away the HVAC foil before the case pressure becomes critical enough to cause damage to the rocket motor. This will all result in a uh, quicker combustion cycle for the engine. Now we've got our uh, 
or excuse me, our tail fin assembly. So for this, um, we've opted for simplicity. We've gone back to the tube fins on this HE variant, and they've got a nice sp uh, tight spiral on them. That's going to provide stability that the uh, projectile needs. We decided to go back to the tube fins just because the folding fins were causing a little bit of problems, and uh, right now we just want to eliminate all sources of potential failure while we get this uh, rocket projectile uh, configuration sorted out. So next I'm going to take my motor, I'm going to insert it into my tail fin section, and I'm just going to put a big thick bead of hot glue around it. All right, so that's secure. That looks good. All right, now in the warhead, this is where we would normally place one of our impact fuse assemblies. And uh, when we're at Ordnance Lab, this warhead will end up getting filled with uh, whatever composition Jake wants to fill it with, honestly. This is just a big experiment. And then after that, we would insert the impact fuse. But since we're not at Ordnance Lab right now, we cannot assemble a destructive device. So there will not be any sort of explosive in the warhead. All right, since our hot glue is nice and set up now, I'm just going to connect the tail fins to the warhead using a big thick bead of, again, hot glue. And before I do that, I'm just going to cover up my pyrogen here. All right, make sure that we are, I don't like the word liberal, but we're liberally applying the hot glue to the warhead and tail fin assembly. We want to make sure we've got a, a nice solid bond here. All right, gonna let that set up for a second. Now I need to obtain some uh, wire. to cut some of this wire off and use it as an extender. All right, so what we need to do is we need to extend our rocket uh, igniter ignition wires. So this is going to seem a little ghetto, and that's probably because it is, but since this is one-time use, it doesn't need to withstand any sorts of uh, uh, movement or anything. We're basically just going to twist the wires and separate them. Now, important step, make sure when you're handling the rocket motor, that your ignition lead is twisted on the end. That's known as shunting. That's gonna prevent any sort of uh, static electric discharge or anything from causing, uh, let's say, uh, some premature issues with your rocket while you're assembling it. All right, so I'm just gonna give these wires a little bit of separation, a small twist. All right, now here comes the uh, kind of difficult part. I've got these that are printed here. These are gonna go on the boost charge. These are, uh, I don't know, I haven't named them yet, boost charge caps. We need to get the fuse and the wire through um, the boost charge caps. So I've got this one here, it's got a larger hole. This is for the top. So we're gonna assemble this by putting our shunted wire through and our quick burning fuse through. And it's kind of a tight fit. All right, we 
want these wires to come through, we'll work on them on the other side, make sure that they're separated. All right, now I'm gonna take this cap, bring it all the way up to the motor. All right, now I'm gonna take my leads. I'm going to wrap one around the fuse. Anchoring it, I'm gonna take the other lead, give it a twist so that it has good separation so we don't get a short circuit. I'm gonna wrap it around the fuse. There we go. So we've got our wires connected here and here, and they're both separated and wrapped around the fuse, so that way they cannot short circuit and cause a failure to launch. Here comes the fun part. This is the boost charge casing. I say fun part because this is a very snug fit. All right, I'm gonna get the cap started, and I'm going to put a couple dabs of hot glue around the perimeter. And then we're going to seat our boost charge cap fully into the cartridge. And then we want to get rid of the excess hot glue because it's going to cause a fitment issue later if we do not. Alright, next I need to figure out a way to let's see, hold that, that's perfect. We're going to have to funnel in our special blend. This is our uh, boost charge propellant. Gonna kind of, if you're in a firearm, you probably already know what that is, but we're gonna keep that on the down low for now. I'm not trying to give everybody every bit of information. We need to funnel our boost charge blend into our charge. So get the fuse and the excess wire stuffed down here. Hey, uh, Dan, do you mind uh, holding this while I funnel? What you got? Oh. Actually, I think I got it full already. Nope, that worked out. Okay, I thought I was going to have to do this like a million times, but there we go. We already know that this charge casing only holds about 22 grams of our propellant mix. So uh, we basically don't measure it anymore because uh, we know that we can use a full casing and not cause any issue with the launcher. All right. Sorry about that. No, you're good. All right. Now very carefully, I need to put my second boost charge cap uh, wires through the hole. And that's easier said than done. Sorry, this is off camera. I'll show it to you in a second. But if I try to show it to you now, I'm gonna end up with propellant all over my table. This video is action packed. Sorry guys, hurrying up, trying to get this thing through the hole here. I might have to drill out the hole. Oh, 
There we go. Perfect. Finally. All right, we got our boost charge cap. We got our wire passing through. So now I need to kind of just get this cap dug into the powder. This is fun. I kind of wish I could pause the video right here because it's going to be super boring for a second. Stay. Okay, on second thought, let's break this. basically pops real nice instead of uh, giving us a little flump. I put a uh, shot shell primer into our boost charge. This ensures that the uh, mercury fulminate on the primer provides a good blast to the, po uh, to the boost charge, <laughs> which will initiate it um, almost simultaneously. All right, we wanna make sure we get good case pressure to launch this thing. Got our cap in place. Now we want to provide another bead of hot glue. Okay, run that cap home, get rid of the excess hot glue. So now we've got our motor and the boost charge assembly, and they're fully together. So next we're going to take our cartridge, which is basically a cylinder with an area here for the uh, boost charge to pass through. I actually need to slightly ream it, so we'll do that real fast. During the printing process, the uh, base of these cartridges get a little bit of elephant foot. So I have to ring them out slightly just to get the boost charge to pass through. Probably should have done that before. It's a good video, but hey, can't think of everything. All right, that should be good. Now we're going to take our wire, pass it through the cartridge. This is another fun part, getting the cartridge to line up with its uh, locating hole. There we go. Perfect. All right. So, got the uh, warhead run home. It's seated. Again, there's nothing in the warhead. And our boost charge here, it goes a little bit outside of the uh, cartridge. And that's good. Because the next step is we're going to fill up our counter mass housing. So I'm going to take a small square of HVAC tape. I don't have to do that if I do the wire first. So, you know, ignore the HVAC tape. We're just going to run the wire through. We need to have a lot of excess wire. It's going to be bundled up within the, car, uh, within the uh, 
within the countermass housing and that's fine, but we need to plug this hole so that way when we're filling it, we don't end up spilling everywhere or anything like this. So I'm gonna seal the wire with hot glue. All right, that should provide a good, nice seal, good moisture barrier, and prevent all of our counter mass from uh, doing its own thing. All right. I kind of need to give this a few moments for the hot glue to set up so that way when I flip it back over it doesn't stick to the table. Do a little bit of clean up here. We'll probably resume in about 60 seconds for anybody who's very impatient. I know I'm not the most patient guy in the world. All right, hot glue is nice and set up. Now it's time to put in our counter mass. Let me get a scoop or something. Now we're going to put our super top secret counter mass in. What this does is the uh, small boost charge, when it lights, it's going to cause the counter mass to go outside the launcher and the rocket to come out the front of the launcher. All right, so now we want to basically pack this down. Basically, we want to fit as much of this as we can into the countermass container because, uh, well, that's the whole purpose is it needs to weigh something. All right. Now, just for giggles, I'm going to take, let me measure this out. I'm going to put about 10 grams of boost charge blend into our counter mass. I can't find the scale. That's about 10 grams. Now we have made a mess, but we've also almost made a 3D printed rocket launcher round. Inert, but still. All right, we're gonna get all the powder off of this, and then we're gonna seal it all up with a big fat bead of hot glue. It's uh, actually quite important to get a, a nice continuous bead because this is all that's keeping any sort of humidity or moisture out of the cartridge and keeping our powders and everything 
home where they need to be. Alright, so we're going to seat that. It's going to ooze out of the gaps, but that's fine. We don't need to wipe any of the excess out. There we go. Alright, so this one is just about ready to test fire. We'll just uh, clean it up. It's got a lot of powder and stuff on it. but So we've got uh, two rounds here ready to test fire. And uh, thank you for joining us all. Uh, oh, five of you. Interesting. All right. <laughs> Thanks.